I've actually written some pretty good songs. Let's talk about those today. All right, so before we get started, let me preface this video and this topic with uh, there seems to be a lot of stigma around musicians, but it's probably not just me, enjoying their own stuff. And it's, I don't know if it's similar in the story writing world, in the painting world or not, uh, but I can think of so many times where somebody has tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, what are you listening to? Well, I'm listening to an iPod or something, and I go, well, I'm actually listening to myself. And uh, you kind of get this, oh, wow, look at you sort of thing. Um, so let me preface this with, I don't listen to myself because I think I'm, you know, God's gift to music, and there's no need to listen to anyone else when I've got me. Um, but it's because I took the time to create something, so of course I come back to those things every once in a while and enjoy them. So today I'm going to give you a short list of some songs that uh, I really like that I made. Uh, and then next week we'll do the opposite. Um, I figured we'd start with the good before we get to the ugly. So the first song on my list this week is called Changing. And I'll go ahead and play some of that for you right now. I am not changing. This life is more than I can take. My faith is shaken. Still proud of my mistakes, so don't be mistaken. I taught myself to keep it straight. I am not faking, I am not changing for you. Some of the songs on the list today will be some of my favorite songs because they were other people's favorite songs of mine. So Changing was one of those. It was pretty popular. It's kind of a slower tune. It's just a picking tune on the guitar. It's just, you know, three or four chords that I walk down to and then kind of a, an F sharp out of nowhere, which I think is neat for a lot of people. And I think the melody is really easy to sing. The meaning of the song is I'm not changing for you just because you want me to. I'll change what I want to change. And I think that's a message that I need to hear. I think it's a message that other people need to hear. And so I think a lot of people, you know, can understand that song and sing along with it and, and, and it can have a lot of meaning to them. And so that's why it's one of my favorite songs I've ever written. When I listened to the recording the other day, I did. I turned to my wife and I said, you know, this is a really clean recording. The guitar sounds good. The background instruments sound good. My vocals sound good. I don't do anything spectacular in that song. It's just a decent song. Uh, and so that's why it's one of my favorite songs that I've ever done. The second song on that list is another popular one that, that was popular with other people, and it's uh, When It's Gone, and uh, here's how that song sounds like. I can't get you to see what I mean. The heart always wants what it wants. Nothing can stop that. But I only care when it's gone. So with When It's Gone, that one's just a really fun song. It sounds like one you might hear in like a, a kind of an older, timey diner. Um, and I think it's just really neat. Um, you've got these you, some pretty cool lines in there. She's a devil, a supervillain. Um, and, and then the chorus, it kind of, the song builds up to this chorus. And I feel like the chorus is loud and just booming. And it feels like every, you know, the guitar, the bass, the drums the organ and the harmonies and everything just all comes in on the chorus and it feels like everyone can jump in and add to the chorus. Um, and so that's why I love that song and why I think it's fairly popular. Um, again, it's very catchy uh, and fun to listen to and fun to sing along to. So it's one of my favorite songs that I've ever written. These next two are going to be slightly different. This next one is called Dead Giveaway. And here it is for you. The world says we see this all the time. It's a dead giveaway, it's a dead giveaway Oh, I know you showed me all the signs of a dead giveaway Of a dead giveaway I told you you'd be sorry, but 
but you never ever listen. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know you're leaving me for him. So with Dead Giveaway, I think that one was slightly popular, but it, I don't think it reached the popularity that those previous two songs uh, in this list do. With Dead Giveaway, it was popular among my circle of friends who understood who that song was about, and it was really my first, I guess, real relationship and how sad it was to break up, that sort of thing. Um, and it was just kind of a big, you know, ooh, we're breaking up and it's all your fault kind of thing and made me look cool, I guess. Um, probably to some people, not most. But with that one, at least with the original version, there's all kinds of, there's trumpets and pianos and keyboards and all this other stuff added to it. And with the version I ended up putting out on my CD on Bandcamp, sounds very much different than that. Um, but again, I think it's just, I, it's one of those songs that tells a story from beginning to end. I don't say the name of the song until the bridge, so it's just kind of a passing like, oh, that's why it's called Dead Giveaway. Um, and it's kind of cool. You kind of hear the story of what I went through, and then the bridge is just kind of this me talking directly to that person, um, and then the story ends. And so that's why Dead Giveaway is one of my favorite songs. Uh, I sing it at every show without fail. It's got a big high note at the end that the people who have heard that song before really want me to do, uh, and so that's why it's one of my favorite songs. And the last song this week for this video is called Living Without Love, and I actually did it at the end of one of the previous videos for this series. So many people are alive today. So many people are alive today. Yeah. And the reason I like Living Without Love is because at the time that I wrote that song, I was listening to a band called St. Paul and the Broken Bones. They're kind of a big band um, sort of sound, and that's what I wanted. I wanted this kind of chug, 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 chug chords to the song. Um, I wanted a heartbreak story, um, and I wanted... Uh, you know, when the chorus comes in, to trumpets to be blasting, you know, ba da ba da ba da ba and um, that sort of thing. And I don't think I ended up doing trumpets in the song. I try and do that with my guitar, with the chords that I play. Um, but that's one of my favorite songs. And I, what's different about it is it's a love song. It's a sad love song, but it's not about, ooh, uh, my heart was broken, a girl broke my heart. It's, um, you know, some people fall out of love or some people have been hurt by love and it's really sad and that's what that song is about and it appeals to a lot more people it's okay to write a song to paint a picture to write a poem to write a story and like it and like what you did uh, to come to the end of that project and say I did a good job that's fine that's okay to do and even now at 26 I still find myself going back every once in a while and listening to music that I've written and I've recorded and, you know, trying to hide it. When people say, what are you listening to? And I might shuffle to the next song and go, oh, I'm listening to this band. Um, I, I need to try better and hopefully you, sh you know, set an example for you to not be ashamed. If I did something I think is good, I might go back and listen to it from time to time. And what you'll see in next week's video is, uh, uh, there's geese flying. What you'll see in next week's video is there's some songs that I've written and I said, man, this was dumb. Why did, okay. See, that's their song and that's fine if they like it. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean they can't sing it. There's a video, I think, where John Mayer, and again, I'm paraphrasing quite a bit here, um, where John Mayer says some of the songs he sings at his shows are for those people. There's, um, there are the songs that he knows are his popular ones, and so he sings those for those people so they can sing along and have a good time. And he also says there's some songs that I sing and play because I wrote them and no one else seems to like them, but I like them, and so I play them. And it's, you know, it's because it's got a 10-minute guitar solo in there, and John Mayer's good at those, and so he sings those songs um, because he likes them, because he took the time to do that, and he says, you know what, they may not be some of my more popular songs, but I like them. And so those were some of my songs that I like, and I hope that you like them too. 
Maybe you don't like those. Maybe, you're, maybe you like the ones I'm going to put in the video next week. Who knows? Um, but here is, of course, I wouldn't leave this video without singing you a song that I wrote. So here's another one that I kind of like. Are you having problems? I'm having troubles too Laughing in their bubbles But their thoughts are misconstrued It's on the television You can see it on the web They put us to comparisons Of love they've left for dead hardest part. Thank you for the broken heart. Caught you up the other day because I missed your voice. You hung up right away and you made me a second choice. I understand the confidence your future is at stake. I wonder where our friendship went and I hope you're doing great Ooh, ah, ah, ah. This is where the healing starts Ooh, ah, ah, ah. This has been the hardest part Thank you for the broken heart Thank you for that broken heart.